The heavy mech ZU-6S Zeus is the Lyran Commonwealth's pride and joy. The initial design ideas were put to paper just after the start of the war with the Draconis Combine in 2407. Three years later, when enemy forces were threatening Hesperus II, the two Zeus prototypes were already lumbering across test terrains. The speed with which the Zeus was brought from idea to reality astounded even the most optimistic general. The Zeus also had the best battlefield test a new mech could ever hope for. When Curetan forces assaulted Hesperus II, the two Zeus prototypes were there, aiding in the defence of the vital battle mech factories. These prototypes carried PPCs on their left arms, and after the battle, the pilots reported that the PPC was extremely erratic and unreliable. Further research revealed that the PPC's insufficient shielding created wild magnetic interactions between it and the mech's engine. The designers thus decided to drop the PPC in favour of the simpler autocannon to ensure quick delivery of the mech to the front. The autocannon gave the Zeus less punch, but the same range as the PPC. The Defiance factories on Hesperus II are the only ones currently producing the Zeus, which first came off the production lines in 2411. The Zeus was designed to engage enemy mechs with its long-range weapons, while the enemy force is still no more than an approaching blot in the distance. It was created in response to requests by Commonwealth commanders for a heavy mech that could perform hit-and-run tactics. This combination of long-range missiles, autocannon, and large laser works well to this task. The Coventry Starfire, which has 15 launchers, is an excellent proven missile system used in several other designs. In the Zeus, however, the tolerance of the Starfire missile system was stretched to the limits. Designers placed the mech's missile tubes around and set back from a large central core. Though its appearance is odd, the design is quite clever, and it's an attempt to protect the missile system, which still allows the Zeus a formidable punch. That central core serves no purpose except as a bludgeon for punching, much like an iron fist on other mechs. The missiles, being set back and away from the impact point, are also safe beneath the armour of the forearm. The drawback of the arrangement is that the missile load system is complicated and prone to breakdown if not serviced regularly. Another problem is that the Zeus can only carry 8 reloads for its missile system. More than once, a Zeus pilot has pressed the trigger, only to hear a silence louder than any reassuring whoosh of missile launches. The large laser is another adaptation. Finding themselves without enough room for a standard laser design, the Zeus engineers decided to create a more compact large laser. As the engineers at Hesperus II were among the few teams who can still use fiber optics, they managed to totally dispense with the bulky rifle barrel of other large lasers. On the Zeus, the large laser is then tucked quite comfortably beneath the left arm. Even though the Zeus functions mostly as a standoff weapon, it has no problem closing and grappling with enemies. Excellent armour protection, especially around the chest and leg areas, is more than enough to withstand up with the heaviest of fire. Strong, heavily armoured legs also make the Zeus a feared kicker, while the loaded left arm is very effective in dispatching unfortunate mechs with its punches. Uh, the mech would first appear in significant numbers when the 15th Lyran Guards recaptured the planet Sakhalin, and through the course of the succession wars, the Zeus had a long and storied history within the Commonwealth, becoming a well-respected assault mech. After the end of the Third Succession War, advances had allowed engineers to mount a PPC on the Zeus again, with the resulting ZU-6T model becoming the standard during the Fourth Succession War, and later the War of 3039. The design also won praise amongst mercenary units, none more so than the Zeta Battalion of Wolf's Dragoons. The Zeus would face resistance by some units of the former AFFS, following the creation of the Federated Commonwealth, whose Davian pride prevented them from making use of the mech despite its superiority to many of their own machines. Likewise, as the Fedcom military increasingly took on a Davian flavour, many Lyran commanders were insistent that their pride and joy was too valuable to give up, and so prodded Defiance Industries to produce new models which made use of newly recovered Star League lost tech. The debut of the ZU-9S Zeus would see production of the previous variants discontinued, and examples of this signature Lyran mech shipped to all corners of the Commonwealth as a symbol of the new alliance.